In this video, I will be teaching you about modulus inequalities. Now, modulus inequalities may seem like a confusing or intimidating topic, but it's actually very simple because when you think about it, we're just combining two very simple topics, which are modulus and inequalities. And when you think of it this way, it's much less confusing. So let's say that, for example, we have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5, and we have to simplify this. So if you remember what absolute values are, it's essentially the magnitude of x. So the absolute value of x is the magnitude of x. And it's very easy to represent this on a number line. So on a number line, the magnitude of a number is essentially its distance from zero. So for example, a magnitude of five can either be five to the right, so that would be positive five, or five to the left, and that would be negative 5. And over here, x is, or the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5, which means that the absolute value of x falls somewhere within this range between negative 5 and 5. So we can write this out. We can say that the value, so this is our value of x over here, so our value of x is going to be less than 5, or less than or equal to 5, and less than or equal to negative 5. So essentially our equation is saying that the absolute value or the magnitude of x is less than or equal to 5. Therefore you'll find 5 or the value of x somewhere between negative 5 and 5. So let's look at a slightly larger or slightly more complicated equation or question. Let's say that we have the equation the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than 3. And what this is saying is that the magnitude, or the absolute value of 2x minus 1, will be less than 3. And when we look at this on a number line, let's say that this is 0, this right here is 3, and this right here is negative 3. Since the magnitude of the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than 3, that means that it won't go further away from 0 than this point, and it won't go further away from 0 than this point, or negative 3. Therefore, it will be, or it can be anything in between these. Because, for example, if this is 1, that's not 10. If this is 1, then the magnitude of the absolute value of this is less than 3. And over here, this is where you will find the equation 2x minus 1. Let's just make this line right here. So let's say that, so with this knowledge, we can say that 2x minus 1 will be found between 3 and negative 3. So it'll be greater than negative 3 and less than 3. So this area of our number line over here. All we need to do now is to just do simple algebra in order to find, or in order to get x alone. So we can add 1 to get rid of this plus 1, so we do plus 1. Then we get minus 2 is less than 2x, which is less than 4. And then to get rid of this 2, we can divide this whole thing by 2. So divided by 2, this will give us a value of negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 4. And this would be our final or simplified answer. And essentially what this means is that for any value of x between negative 1 and 4, if we plug it into this equation up here, or 2x minus 1 is less than 3, then we will get a value of 2x minus 1, or an absolute value of 2x minus 1, that is less than 3. Okay, so now let's switch things around a little bit. So up top, or earlier on, we said that the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5. So what happens if we switch the sign and say that the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 5? We can draw this out on a number line once again. So if we have our number line over here, this is 0, this is positive 5, and this right here is negative 5 then the absolute value of x, or the magnitude of x, is greater than or equal to 5. 
That means over here, the value will be greater than or equal to five because the magnitude is greater than five. And over here, since the magnitude is once again greater than five, it will be more than five points away from zero. So all values that are less than negative five. So we can write this out using two expressions. So the first being that x will be less than or equal to negative five, or x will be greater than or equal to five. So in order for the absolute value or the magnitude of x to be greater than five, it must either be less than negative five or greater than or equal to five. Let's look at another example. Let's say that once again, we have the value two x minus one. So the absolute value of two x minus one is greater than three. So last time it was less than this time it is greater than three. So once again, let's draw this out on a number line. Here we have zero, here we have three, and here we have negative three. So the absolute value of two x minus one or the magnitude is greater than three. That means that the distance from zero will be greater than three, three units. So on the right side, it will be going in this direction because it's greater than three. And on the left side, it will be going further away from zero, giving us values less than negative three. So we can write this out as two x minus one is less than negative three or 2x minus 1 is greater than 3. And now all we need to do is solve algebraically to make x alone. So over here we can add 1. We get 2x is less than negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2. Then we get x is less than negative 1. Or over here we have 2x add 1, you get 2x is greater than 4, divide both sides by 2, and you get x is greater than 2. And this right here is our final or simplified answer. So using what we just derived here for when the absolute value is less than a number or when it is greater than a number, we can come up with two different rules. So we can come up with two different rules. So the first is that when the absolute value of p is less than or equal to q or any number, then p will be less than or equal to q and greater than or equal to negative q. And once again, if we draw this on a number line where this is zero, this is positive q and this is negative q, our value for p will fall somewhere in between negative q and q because the magnitude of p or the absolute value or its distance from zero is less than that of q. So this right here is our first rule. Our second rule that we can derive for when, so when the absolute value of p is greater than or equal to q, then in this case, p will either be less than or equal to negative q, or p will be greater than or equal to q. And we can draw this on a number line as well. So let's say that a number line, this is zero, this is positive q, and this is and this is negative q, then our value for p will either be greater than q, because the magnitude of p is greater than q, or it will be less than negative q. So once again, you're going further away from zero in both cases, and both of these will be the values of p. So these are our two equations. And I highly recommend that you try to memorize these equations. It just makes solving for such questions much faster and easier.